السلام علیکم ٹوڈے وی ول ڈسکس الٹرا ساؤنڈ گائڈیڈ النر بلاگ دس از مائی انٹروڈکشن دی آبجیکٹوز آف دس پریزنٹیشن آر انٹروڈکشن آف النر بلاگ ریلیونٹ اینٹومی آف دی النر پری آپریٹو اسسمنٹ اینڈ پریپریشن انڈیکیشن آف دی النر بلاگ کنٹا انڈیکیشن آف النر بلاگ complication and side effect of ulnar block, prerequisite of ulnar block, equipment and logistics required, ultrasound setting, sonar anatomy of the ulnar block, making position for ulnar block, conduct of ulnar block, intraoperative care, postoperative care and clinical tips. Introduction of ulnar block. Ulnar nerve is the last branch of the medial cord of the brachial plexus. Rather, it is a continuation of the medial cord. Ulnar nerve does not give any branch in axilla and in the arm. First branch of the ulnar nerve is articular branch given to elbow. Second branch is palmar cutaneous branch given in the mid forearm. That's why ulnar nerve is blocked in upper one third of the forearm because if you block in the lower arm this palmar cutaneous nerve is spared at this level ulnar nerve runs between muscles and easily blocked in uh, lower forearm ulnar nerve is accompanied by ulnar artery and this is a very good landmark to identify the ulnar nerve as we track the ulnar nerve proximally towards elbow Ulnar nerve separates from ulnar artery in almost middle of the forearm and easily block in the upper one third of the forearm. Relevant anatomy of the ulnar nerve in the axilla and arm. Origin. Ulnar nerve has root value of C7, C8 and T1. Ulnar nerve arises in the axilla as last branch and continuation of the medial cord of the brachial plexus. Ulnar nerve does not give any branch in the axilla and arm. In the axilla, it runs along medial side of the third part of the axillary artery, between axillary artery and vein. Then it enters in the arm. In the arm, it is posterior medial to the brachial artery up to the mid-arm, where it pierces the medial intermuscular septum and enters the posterior extensor compartment of the arm. In the posterior compartment, it runs anterior to the middle head of the tricep muscle and runs downward towards medial epicondyle and passes behind medial epicondyle into the arm. In its course, in the posterior compartment, it is accompanied by superior ulnar collateral artery. Ulnar enters the forearm by passing through two heads of flexor carpi ulnaris muscle. This is a diagram showing the middle cord and the ulnar nerve is a continuation medial to the axillary artery. Ulnar in forearm. In upper one third of forearm, the ulnar nerve runs vertically downward under cover of flexor carpi ulnaris between flexor digitorum profundus and superficialis. In the lower two third of the arm, it becomes superficial and lies lateral to the flexor carpi ulnaris and accompanied by ulnar artery on its lateral side. In forearm, it gives branches to the elbow, to flexor carpi ulnaris and flexor digitorum profundus medial half. In the mid forearm, it gives a palmar cutaneous branch which supplies the skin over the hepatinar eminence. 5 cm above the wrist joint, it gives dorsal cutaneous branch which supplies the skin medial third of the dorsum of the hand and medial one and a half finger. It enters the palm by passing under piscio hemate ligament and divides into terminal superficial and deep branch. So it is important to block the nerve in upper one third of the arm to avoid skipping of palmar cutaneous branch. This is a diagram showing the course of the ulnar nerve in the forearm, passing behind the medial epicondyle between the muscle towards the pisciform bone. Course of ulnar nerve in hand. Ulnar nerve enters the hand on the lateral side of the pisciform bone and divides in superficial and deep terminal branches. Superficial branch supplies palmaris brevis muscle and supplies skin of the medial one and half finger of the hand. Deep branch is purely motor and runs from medial to lateral in the palm and ends in the substance of the abductor pollicis to which it supplies. 
it gives branches to the flexor pollicis brevis, branches to the three palmar entrochiae muscles, branches to four dorsal entrochiae muscles, branches to two medial lumbrical muscles. It also gives branches to muscles of hypothenar eminence, flexor digiti minimi, abductor digiti minimi, and opponents digiti minimi. This is a diagram showing the course of the ulnar nerve in the hand, showing superficial and deep branches. Cutaneous supply of the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve provides sensory supply to the following areas of the hand. The skin of the palmar and dorsal aspect of the medial one and half digit and adjacent palm. The skin on the medial side of the dorsum of the hand. This is a diagram showing the supply of the skin, dorsally and ventrally, one and a half finger, and the related skin of the palm. This is a diagram showing the area of skin supplied by the ulnar nerve. In perioperative assessment and preparation, we take history, do physical and general examination, we investigate, look for the comorbids, and we do risk assessment and grading. Then we optimize the comorbids and prepare the patient for surgery and anesthesia. We take consent, keep patient in PO, and we do side marking. Indication of ulnar nerve block. Surgery of the little finger or fifth metacarpals. A reduction of the fifth metacarpal fracture or MCP dislocation. Repair of multiple laceration of the ulnar aspect of the hand and little finger. Analgesia for burns to the hand. Rescue analgesia or anesthesia for failed inadequate brachial plexus block ulnar sparing. Contraindication of the ulnar nerve block. Patient refusal and non-cooperation on the patient. Local infection and sepsis at the site of injection. Neuropathy. Allergy to the drug. Obligations and side effects. Intraneural injection can occur, which is very rare. If we block the nerve in the middle of the forearm, it can occur. Infection can occur, which needs a sterile technique. Partial or failed block can occur with every block. Bleeding at the puncture site can occur. Intramuscular hematoma can occur. Vascular puncture can occur. Vascular injection can occur. Nerve injury including neuroparexia or neurolysis. Local anesthetic systemic toxicity can occur. Allergic reaction to the local anesthetic can occur. Prerequisite of ultrasound guided ulnar nerve block. We use a sterile technique. We need a bright light source. We need 18 gauge working IV cannula access. We need standard monitoring. We need resuscitation drugs, all including lipid solution. We need trained assistant. We need facilities of general anesthesia in hand. We check consent and detailed briefing of the blog to the patient. We request for NPO and sign in. Equipment and logistic required. Basic standard monitors are required. High frequency linear ultrasound probe and ultrasound machine. Insulated blunt bevel, ecogenic needle 50 to 80 millimeter length. Sterile gloves, sterile cleansing solution probe cover and sterile jelly, four sterile towel to isolate the block area, five cc syringes with local anesthetic for puncture site analgesia, pressure mirroring syringe and tubing, local anesthetic volume and dose calculated as per kg. Sedatives, analgesic are required like midazolam, fentanyl and ketamine. Facilities to convert patient GVA if the block is partial or fail. Ultrasound setting. We put ultrasound machine always in front of the eyes of the operator. We use high frequency ultrasound with a frequency more than 14 megahertz. We use linear probe. We use in plane technique. Identify orientation of needle with probe. Keep the angle of needle with probe at less than 30 degrees for a clear visualization of the needle. Best views obtained when needle is kept parallel to the probe. Needle length, 50 to 80 millimeter length is required depending on the muscle mass. Depth setting, 1 to 2 centimeters, maybe 3 centimeters required 70 kg per son. Sononatom is essential before practical conduct of plug in every case. We place the ultrasound probe transversely on the PC farm bore and identify ulnar artery. The ulnar nerve is medial to the ulnar artery. Here, ulnar nerve is very thin and almost adherent to the ulnar artery up to half of the lower arm. The ulnar artery and nerve are traced upward in the forearm. Above the middle of the forearm, ulnar nerve separates from artery 
an upper one third of the forearm nerve can be blocked easily. Use part to optimize best view. Color Doppler can be used to identify ulnar artery. Use part to optimize best view. This is a diagram showing the ulnar nerve in upper one third of the forearm. It runs between the flexor digitorium profundus, flexor digitorium superficialis, and flexor carpi ulnaris muscle. How to make position for ulnar nerve block? Block is executed in area designated for regional blocks. All facilities must be available in this area. Elevate the bed up to avoid bending of the operator. Keep patient in supine position. Arm is abducted as convenient. Elbow kept extended or little flexed. Hand kept supine. Operator can work from side of the patient. See the next slide. Routine pillow support to relax neck muscle. This is a diagram showing the position of the ulnar nerve block. Conduct of the ulnar nerve block. Sono anatomy is done before preparing and draping the block area. Sign in and sight mark done in preoperative holding area. Steroid preparation of the area done in area block with towels. Area isolated with towels. We use puncture side analgesia. Probe position will be transverse at wrist on PC form bone to identify ulnar artery. Identify ulnar nerve as hyperechoic structure on middle side of the ulnar artery, almost attached to the ulnar artery. Track ulnar artery proximally. The ulnar nerve is attached with the ulnar artery in lower one third of the forearm and then slowly gets separated from artery in middle third of the forearm. Ulnar nerve can be blocked easily in upper one third of forearm because it is away from the artery. Second, it gives palmar cutaneous branch in the mid arm. So the best place to block the ulnar nerve is upper one third of the forearm. We block the ulnar nerve in facial planes as in plane technique. This is a diagram showing ulnar nerve encircled with the fluid of local anesthetic. Intraoperative care. We brief all details of the block to the patient before starting the procedure. We need cooperation of the patient. We apply full standard monitoring as far as GA throughout procedure. We avoid hypothermia and use full body bear hugger. We test motor and sensory block before tunicate and incision. Motor block is tested by finger movement. Isolate limb by full screen. Pseudoanalgesia can be given but better after confirmation of the block. Pseudoanalgesia can mark signs of lost. Monitor lost. Keep in hand lipid solution in OR and in recovery. Alternatively, close verbal communication maintained with the patient throughout the procedure. In case of inadequate block, get ready to convert the block into GA post-operative care. We gently shift the patient to the recovery area after finishing the surgery and dressing. We apply the monitors in the recovery room and we monitor for loss also. Protect patient from injury with arm string. Inform patient about approximate time of return of sensation. Exchange mobile cell contacts to assist in case of problems or queries. We recommend early mobility, early resumption of food and drink, early pain-free physiotherapy, analgesia, IV or oral when block wears off. Technical tips. Put ultrasound machine in front of your eyes. Sono anatomy is must before practical conduct of the block. Always give support to probe hand and needle hand. Use sterile technique. Confirm orientation of needle with ultrasound probe before inserting the needle. Implant technique is used usually. Color doppler helps to identify ulnar artery. Open interfacial plane with hydrodissection and the direct vision. Optimal volume is 5 to 10 ml. Inject local and in small increment and encircle nerve like donut. Don't move needle until full needle is visible with bevel cut. Avoid internal injection by pain on injection by mirroring injection pressure. If it is more than 15 PSI, that indicates intraneural. Then under direct vision, we see where the fluid is going. Thanks.